Hi Roboticist, in this section of ROS controller uh, we will see how to publish the joint position controller command using the package RQT package and in the last video I remember you that we have done it via command line uh, in ROS exists a very user-friendly GUI that you can use in your simulation and allows you to test very easily how each joint behaves to a certain command in joint position. So if you want to add this GUI in your uh, simulation you can just simply add a node in your launch file. So let's do it and uh, before the end of the launch tag uh, you can open brackets and add a node and uh, we can call it uh, RQT reconfigure and then the package is gonna be RQT GUI and uh, has the same name for executable file in type RQT GUI so then we can launch this launch file and see what happened And as you can see, the robot is spawned correctly in our environment with a simplified version, let's say, with only, two, uh, with only three links. Then if we press play, the robot stands, so meaning that the ROS controller are, um, is working. And then let's open the GUI and if you uh, click uh, refresh, uh, the refresh button, you can see at the section at the window of topic all the topics that are available. And all these topics are automatically generated thanks to the Gazebo plugin. So you can see that when you click the topic, the type is going to be fulfilled automatically and you can see that the type of this topic is going to be standard messages slash float 64 and then on the right you can choose the frequency that you want your your topic to be published and if you press uh, the bottom uh, plus in green you can see at the main window uh, that the topic is going to pop up you can see the, that there is the, the rate of 100 and if you press the arrow um, there will be the data that uh, you can uh, publish so we can set the, as an expression um, scalar data uh, where we can try, for example, 1.57 uh, in radians, so that uh, uh, remember you is going to be 90 degrees, and then if you uh, tip the uh, window, you can see that uh, the uh, joint that links the link 1 and link 2 is working. and. Uh, the link 2 you can see that is moving to 90 degrees then we can test it again and in the expression now we can set minus 1.57 and if you type enter the joint is going to work and is going to put the link 2 at the opposite side Then you can add another topic, uh, for example, let's do it for joint one position controller command. So I remember you that uh, this uh, joint um, links the base link to the link one. 
So the link one is going to make a revolution along the longitudinal axis of the base link. And uh, if we set up an expression of, uh, let's say, um, 1.57, then click uh, the tip the windows, and you can see that uh, the uh, joint one position controller is working. Then we can come back to zero and so on and so forth. So feel free to um, check uh, all the position and test uh, your simplified robots. So as you can see, nothing new compared to the position sent via command line. So it's going to be the same. In the last video, we have sent a radiant joint position via common line. And in this video, we have sent the same messages via RQT GUI. So now what we need to do is to check if the P values of the controllers for each joint are correct. And how can we do that? Well, usually a good practice to do that is to send to a joint a sinus command between a lower and an upper limit of the joint itself and check what will be the real actual value of the joint. So as a recap we will have two values. The values that we ask the joint to be at, which is the command topic, and the second will be the real value that the robot is at that moment in real time, in real life. So this value will be the process value that is monitored in another topic that we are going to see in a moment. So you can imagine that there will be an error between these two values over the time and the scope is to trick the PID values of the controllers in order to minimize that error. And what we're gonna do is to visualize this error via a plot of these two variables over the time. So let's do it right away. So in the expression side of our joint two position controller command, we can send to this joint an expression of the amplitude that is going to be 90 degrees and sinus i slash 100. So i represents the time frame. 100 is going to be the frequency that we are at and the uh, 1.57 is uh, uh, the uh, scalar values for the amplitude of this uh, sinus message. So these expressions means that we are continuously publishing a message of type uh, sinus at the frequencies of 100 Hertz and the joints need to oscillate between plus and minus 90 degrees. So if we press enter we can see that uh, the uh, joint two position controller is doing his job by oscillating the link to from one side and from another side or better from plus um, 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. 
Okay, this is uh, the expression of uh, the common topic of the joint to position controller. And uh, now what uh, we want to do is uh, to plot uh, this value. So if you go to plugin and uh, go to plot, so you can see that uh, the value of the joint to position controller command is plot in the windows. So uh, go to topic and type uh, cobot slash joint position controller command, then uh, click and slash data. And you can see the values. Okay, then what we need to do is to compare this plot um, with the state and the process value that represent the real value that the joint has. So here you go, in uh, light blue uh, you can see the plot of the command data that is the input that uh, we, the controller is sending and in purple you can see the state process value that is gonna be the real position where the joint 2 is at in that moment. So now what we can do is uh, to check how the uh, proportional integer and uh, uh, derivatives values affect the controller of uh, its uh, joint. So if we go to plugins uh, and looking for a dynamic reconfigure, uh, you can see that if we click to the cobot uh, namespace uh, joint to position controller in the main window is uh, popping up uh, the three values uh, p proportional integers and derivatives that I remember you in the configuration file has been uh, set up uh, as a first guess so for example uh, let's check uh, what uh, happens if uh, uh, we put uh, as a proportional data uh, minus values and you can see that uh, uh, the process value is uh, going uh, uh, without control and if we increase uh, the proportional value well uh, the process value is going to be is going to reach uh, the data value meaning that uh, the error can be uh, ne uh, negligible and the same thing uh, we can uh, make it uh, uh, with the integer and uh, you feel free to check uh, um, the uh, a good, good values but uh, uh, we can see that if uh, uh, we set a proportional uh, value as a 700 uh, integer at 50 and the derivative of 70 um, the error is going to be negligible so we can consider uh, these three values uh, uh, good so I hope uh, that you got the point here and uh, what we're gonna do in the next video is uh, uh, to uh, tune the PID value for each joint of the robot that we are going to reconstruct from the link 3 on. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell in order to do not miss the next topic which is gonna be interesting. Thank you for your attention and keep learning robotics with Ross.